Kutchishan. Hey YouTube, Dog Kutchishan84 here, and welcome to Q&A number 147. Let's kick it off. Um, I mean, there's a comment about Gen X's. Um, it's not a question, but yeah, that's cool. Um, first questions are from John Cross. One, request duel, Neo Spaceians versus Elemental Heroes. I, I suppose I could do that, even though this matchup has already happened like two or three times already. Um, why are there requests for matchups that have already happened, like inside and outside of my request duel series? Um, another thing I should point out that I actually forgot to bring up last week was that um, it's not that easy for me to do requests right now, um, considering it's now harder to meet up with people who'd be willing to help me do them. Uh, plus it depends um, how well they know the deck. We'll see though. Two, what Yu-Gi-Oh products are you going to open in the future? I've already answered this question like a million times. I don't want to answer it again. Uh, I, I don't even think I'll be getting this year's Mega Tins. There's, there's probably not going to be anything I'm interested in. Three, Blue Eyes White Dragon or Insect Queen? Blue Eyes White Dragon all the way. Four, what is your hated Link monster? Mine is Access Code Talker. Hmm. I'm guessing you must have missed that top five video on my hated links. Um, well, the answer to that question is Altergeist Hexia. Or Hextia. Hey, yeah, I really fucking hate Altergeists. They're it's a stupid, bullshit, toxic archetype, which is just no fun to play against. It does way too many things that just don't let anyone play the game. And in the case of Hextia, it negates half my deck. Um, so, yeah, screw that card. Um, five. What is the worst Yu-Gi-Oh product you opened? I'm not sure I can think of anything that's the worst product. Um, I can tell you what uh, products that were arch nemesis packs of mine. Um, Legendary Duelists 5 and 7, because I never ever pulled Evil Hero, a Dusted Gold, and the Ghost Rare Winged Dragon of Ra from their respective packs. It was so annoying. Um, Duelist Revolution was also an arch nemesis of mine, because I hardly ever pulled any hollows. Um, uh, in fact, the only big ones I remember pulling were one of the Unicorn Synchros, and in a big opening I did a while ago, I did pull an ultimate rare effect Veiler. Um, so that was cool. But I'm pretty sure that was like five years after Driv came out. Um, I'm pretty sure Judgment of the Light was another arch nemesis of mine um, that I've hardly ever pulled anything great from. That's all I can think of. Uh, six. What is your favourite Earthbound Immortal and worst, uh, worst Earthbound Immortal card? I assume by worst you mean least favourite. Um, well, my favourite is actually a tie between Kukapakapu and Asilapisku. Um, I just really like those ones the most. Um, Kukapakapu because it's a flame wingman and 
it does damage regardless of whether it's attacking a monster or attacking directly, whereas a Silipiscu just bombs the opponent's monsters and does burn damage. Um, basically, elements of her absolute zero or crack. Um, yeah, really like those. Um, whereas the least favourite would have to be Rakocha Raska, because because it just takes so much to get full use out of its effects. Um, I need to have some other cards on the field to like. I think it was spin back um, and um, discard the same num. And I need to be able to discard the same number of cards. Um, so yeah, it takes a lot to get a lot of use out of it. Um, I, I still run it anyway in my Earthbound Immortal deck, but, um, but yeah, it's just the least appealing one. Seven. What do you think of Archfiend Black Skull Dragon? Oh, Archfiend Black Skull Dragon is amazing. Um, it's a great card um, for red eyes. Um, yeah, I will usually go for that one if I want to be able to attack with safety. Um, if it's turn one I'd rather go for Meteor Black Comet Dragon but if it's like turn two or three then I'll go for the Archfiend if need be. Um, and eight. I like Elemental Hero Neos as a secret rare. What do you think? Yeah, Neos is nice, nice as a secret rare. Um, still like it as a common and an ultra though, but yeah, secrets are nice too. Um, I've still got my original secret rares in my Rainbow Neos deck. Um, yeah, they're just very nostalgic. Um, next question. Oh wait, there's another one from John Cross. Um, did you see the eclipse yet? What eclipse? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I haven't heard anything about an upcoming eclipse. Um, I need more information. Right, next questions are from Webbers5. Um, got a bit tongue-tied, or does the mere action of having to say Endymion disgust you? No, Endymion doesn't disgust me. Um, I mean, besides Mighty Master, I do like the archetype, and I've been playing the original ones like before uh, the Endymion Pendulums came out. Um, I just simply got tongue-tied, and you know, it's just something that happens if I happen to be talking too fast, or I just have trouble saying something. And, just get words mixed up. Um, next questions are from Matt and Alison Welch. One, like how I've mentioned that BLS Envoy of the beginning was originally my ace monster and favourite card in the game before Dark Magician until October 2004, I know you said a few times that Robotic Knight was yours as well and holds a special place in your heart. If Robotic Knight ever got support exclusively for him, would you build a Robotic Knight deck? I know you said you don't want to build or rebuild any more decks, but uh, this would be like a cool throwback of returning to your roots. I guess I would, yeah. Um, it would be interesting, and I would build it on Edo Pro, definitely. Um, of course, Machine King and Perfect Machine King would have to be involved somehow as well, because because uh, I'm pretty sure it mentions on the flavor text of Robotic Knight that he serves the Machine King. Um, so I guess they're technically part of the same series of cards, whereas Perfect Machine King is uh, is the upgraded version of Machine King. Um, Hell, maybe there could be some retrains in the future. Who knows? Um, and on a side note um, about not wanting to rebuild any more decks, um, 
Uh, there is a little bit of a mini announcement which I'm just randomly throwing in. Um, uh, I've decided that, well some know this anyway, but I've decided that I want to rebuild my Stardust Junk, Odd Ice Dimension Dragon and Cyber Stacks. Um, because after looking at um, Kasame Unlimited's deck profiles and Six Path of Pain Challenge series, I kind of felt like I wanted to have a deck based on each summoning mechanic. I swear I'm just never going to be able to cut down to my signature three. It's just hard. Because um, obviously I've got two fusion decks, Elemental Heroes and Rainbow Neo, so though I'd like to think Elemental Heroes are my main fusion deck, I technically have two ritual decks, um, Magician of Chaos, that is if I um, bring in Dark Magician Ritual Mode, and Nouvelle, although I still want to sell Nouvelle at some point, um, and I have an Xyz deck, which is my Melfi's, but I don't have a Synchro, Pendulum, or Link deck anymore. So I, I would kind of like that, and and I chose those because, well, they're protagonist archetypes, and I like those more than anything else, really. I was also tempted to bring back Red Dragon Archfiend as well, because I've been having a lot of fun with that online, and I feel like it would be cheaper and easier to build, like all I'd need to do is get free structure decks and get some other cards from outside it, and then boom, I'm sorted. But I just like Stardust more than Red Dragon Archfiend. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I could have also tried to bring back my Utopia deck, I mean, I have some of the core still, but I just don't know if I can be bothered, even though I like Utopia. And like I said, I already have an Xyz deck, so it doesn't seem necessary. Anyway, back to the questions. 2. In the original anime, Yugi slash Atem summoned BLS only a few times, once against Mai, once against Five-Headed Dragon, once against those monsters in the virtual world with Noah, once against Darts, once against the Great Leviathan, and once against Jaden in GX. Not included Capsule Monsters and Envoy of the Beginning. Out of all the times it was summoned, which summon looks the coolest? I would say my favourite was when he gets summoned... was when he summoned him against Darts with Kaiba. Ooh, I wish I looked back on these before I started doing the questions. Um, just trying to remember them all. Uh, although, honestly, I feel like the very first one has to be the coolest, um, in my personal opinion. Um, uh, there was just a lot of build-up to it. Um, you know, having... Gaia the Fierce Knight and Karibo tributed, um, and um, just showing off an actual gate of chaos. Um, it was just cool. Um, although I did also find it weird that back in Duelist Kingdom era, uh, it didn't require a ritual monster to be in the hand. Um, Try to remember when it was changed. Um, I'm assuming it would have been Battle City onwards. Um, I guess that does try and balance rituals out a bit more. Um, but then again, I'm I'm pretty sure there are like a couple of cards that ritual summon from the deck. Um, if I remember correctly. Um, the counterpart of advanced ritual art does it. Um, I forget what its actual name is. Um, I know it has ritual art in the name, and it came out in a somewhat recent set. I can't think what it is right now. Um, no. Yeah, just an interesting thing I thought I'd bring up. <clears throat> 
and the last 10 questions are from Super Ultra Hero 9961. Before you answer my questions again, I know I've said this a lot of times, but I really love your videos and I hope you continue to do them. You put so much hard work into your videos. You are actually one of my favourite YouTubers of all time. Ah, oh, thank you very much. I'm really flattered. One. Are you going to pick up the new Jaden Funko Pop? I think I will at some point. Um, maybe I won't try and go for it directly though. Um, depending on how much it costs, I anticipate that either Express Gaming or Gamer Central will probably uh, give it for me as a future Christmas or birthday present. Um, but I never even planned to start a pop figure collection anyway. Um, I mean, five years ago I bought the Dark Magician one uh, just because I wanted to have it. Um, and then all of a sudden I'm getting all these Funko Pops. Um, uh, as presents. Um, I hope I don't run out of room, plus I need to find a space for them in my new home uh, once me and Emma are living together. 2. What did you think of the final duel of Yuma and Astral, and what did you think of the ending? Oh, I enjoyed watching it. It was one of the best duels of the series. It has to be among my top two, definitely. I guess it made sense for Astral to use the numbers and not Yuma, well apart from number F0, um, but yeah, it was cool um, having them summon pretty much all the monsters they've played throughout the series, um, not all the numbers though, um, shame really, but um, it was still enjoyable, um, and the ending was good for what it was. Um, everyone came back um, thanks to Astral and the new Moron Code. Um, shame that the ending was kind of ambiguous uh, because there was this other big threat and um, Yuma and the gang all go off to help Astral. Um, I mean, it would be nice to see some sort of follow-up to that. I mean, even if there isn't a spin-off for, like, um, Zexor, there should at least be another movie um, where they're involved um, and have Yuma team up with all the other protagonists. Um, I mean, I know I've said it before, but I really want to see Jaden... Yugi, Yusei, Yuma, Yuya and Playmaker team up against a bad guy somehow. Um, I, mean, I know friends would prefer a follow up to Dark Side of Dimensions, but um, you know, a team up of anime protagonists would be great to see again. Um, just because I really loved Bonds Beyond Time that much. I mean, like I said before, that was my favourite Yu-Gi-Oh! movie, out of all the ones we've got. Um, well, even if we don't get that, then I would like to see a Yu-Gi-Oh! GX movie. Um, I mean, we've already had a couple for the original series, so um, let's give GX some love, shall we? Anyway, three. Do you think they'll ever make a Shining Flare Wingman Funko Pop? Do you think you will pick it up? Ooh, I don't know. Um, I mean, I would love to see that, and I would gladly try and pick that up, but I'm not holding my breath for that one. Um, I don't know if it will happen, because uh, it's not a monster that's been played in GX as much as I would have liked to see it, I think. Um, I mean, how many times was it summoned anyway? Uh, three times in season one, um, three times in season two, um, so six so far, hasn't been summoned at all in season three, and twice in season four, so that's 
eight times. Um, so I don't know. I'd love to see it, but I don't know if it'll happen. Um, four. What is your favourite utopia form? Or wait, did you meant to write forms? Um, or is it just form? Um, uh, mine being Utopia and Utopia Ray V and Utopia Ray Victory. Well, I've got um, three forms as well. One being uh, the original, because it is my favourite number. Um, whereas another favourite form is Utopia the Lightning, which is my number one favourite Xyz monster. Although, it is also a love-hate card of mine. I mean, I like using it myself so I can attack with safety, but I really hate it when it's used against me. It's so annoying. It's turning off Mirror Force and even the Magician Girls. I mean, Utopia the Lightning is an anti-magician girl card. <clears throat> so annoying if that comes up. But yeah, I can't really hate it. Not really. Um, unlike George from DU. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and um, it's funny you should mention Utopia Rate Victory because he's a form that I really like as well. Um, it's just a lot of fun ranking up into him, um, especially through Numeron Force, which is my favourite rank up spell. Um, just turning off all other face up cards permanently um, on the field at the time of activation, that is. Um, Utopia Ray V is fun as well. Um, I've also had fun with uh, Dragonic Future. Um, the cover card of Lightning Overdrive, um, so great, um, just being able to equip a Zexor weapon, whether it's being attacked or targeted by a card effect, it's just beautiful, um, yeah. Five, what do you think of Iron Man, because he's my favourite superhero, Spider-Man being my second. Well, I guess that makes two of us, because I guess Spider-Man is my fa second favourite superhero as well, but is my favourite Marvel superhero. Um, yeah, Iron Man is cool. Um, yeah, he's a very cool hero, especially when he's being portrayed by Robert Downey Jr. in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, yeah, he's really a role that's suited for him and he made the role his own it was just fantastic um, <clears throat> I, I didn't pay much attention to him though like before um, the original Iron Man movie but um, yeah, since then I've been pretty keen on Iron Man as well um, Six. What is your favourite way of summoning Shining Flare Wingman? Mine being Super Poly. Hmm. That's a very interesting way to try and pull it off, and kind of awkward. Um, I guess it works if you're playing a mirror match. Although then again, I suppose if you're if you've got Flame Wingman and Spark Man on the field, and you're attacking with them, and then once they've attacked, you go super poly, fuse them into Shining Flare, then, yeah, that, yeah I can see that working. Um, whereas my favourite way of doing it is through Miracle Fusion, another of my favourite spells. Um, it, yeah, Miracle Fusion is just such an amazing card to top into late game and then bust out Shining Flare Wingman, attack over a, a monster, a biggish monster, um, provided Shining Flare Wingman can overcome it, do damage, and it's just game over. I've done that many times in all the years that I've played Elemental Heroes. Um, yeah, so great. And, you know, I still 
love being able to play three copies of Miracle Fusion um, in my deck. I, mean, I can see why other hero decks prefer like one or two, but um, but I feel like in a pure proper old school elemental hero deck, um, three should still be played like absolutely. Seven. Do you like it when Shining Neos Wingman and Shining Flare Wingman are briefly on the field? To me, that is pretty sick, both the original and the new one working together. Yes, I do like it when that happens. Um, I've managed to pull that off in duels a few times. Not that much, but, um, but I've done it a few times, and <laughs> yeah, it is, it is a beautiful sight to see. 8. Will you do some Yu-Gi-Oh! reaction videos? Um... I mean, maybe I could. I mean, I technically already do, because I still do list reaction videos. Um... I mean, honest, although I don't see much point doing those anymore, considering... Um... I'm not playing the normal current format, um, and like I keep saying, I only keep doing it because everyone loves my ban list reaction videos, so I'm literally just doing it for you guys. Um, I don't know what else I could react to, really. Um, I, I guess it depends. Um, I'm worried that um, if I'm looking at someone else's Yu-Gi-Oh content and I film a reaction, I might get a copyright message. Then again, I suppose I could ask um, uh, beforehand, but um, but I, I don't know. We'll see. 9. What is your favourite colour? Mine being red. My favourite colour is blue. Um, and that's purely because of Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, oh, do you guys like this Lego figure? Um, it's another birthday present. Or, or a souvenir from my younger brother. Um, yeah. Big fan of Sonic, even though I'm behind on all the video games. Um, I do have a second favourite colour though, which is black, purely because I'm part goth. Um, I was fully goth at one point. Um, I mean, in 2006, um, after a breakup, I went into a full-on gothic phase, um, although, like, in more recent years, I just think of myself as part goth, I still listen to, like, heavy metal music, um, what have you, but, uh, I listen to other types of music as well, it's very diverse, and there are times where I will wear more colourful clothes, um, which is kind of a necessity uh, in hot sunny weather because um, it just sucks that black clothing absorbs heat and it's like fuck my life and to quote that meme that's been on other social media why am I like this <laughs> and 10 what do you think of Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon? Because that's my favourite card. An Ace Monster. Oh, it's your favourite card, an Ace Monster. Okay. Um, Yuya is my favourite character. So you're a big Og 5 fan. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I like Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon as well. Um, he is actually my favourite Pendulum Monster. And Yuya is a favourite character of mine. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, Old Eyes is my favourite pendulum monster. Um, and I'm, I'm 
pretty sure I've played him in like every single pendulum deck that I did play. I mean, uh, pendulums aren't something I commonly play anyway. I mean, the only ones I've had over the years are Dimension Dragon, now Odd Eyes Dimension Dragon, which, like I said earlier, I want to rebuild. My Highlander Yuya character deck, my Supreme King deck, and um, my normal Pendulum deck. Um, although there were only two cards that, in my normal Pendulum deck, that Odd Eyes could search, and that was Mild Turkey and Sea Dragoons of Draconia. Um, Um, but yeah, you'll be in for a treat once I've put my Odd Eyes Dimension Dragon deck back together, that's for sure, in terms of games. And that is it for questions in this episode. Um, sorry, it's a bit of a late one. Um, uh, yeah, thank you guys for your questions, very cool ones as always, and if you've got any other questions you want to ask me, post them in the comments section down below, and remember I do these episodes every Tuesday afternoon or evening UK time, so be sure to get your questions in before then, so that you don't miss out. Thanks again, stay safe, and I'll catch you guys later. See ya! Thank you very much for watching, be sure to subscribe to the Dark Magician YouTube channel.